Okay, then listen. Right, I'm gonna. I've found some things that I think will interest you, and I want your first thoughts on these. Okay. Now these are facts that I've sourced. Mm. Okay. What's the What's the actual topic? Well, you love animals, don't you? You're interested in animal well, some facts. Some of them. I don't. Mm. I don't love them. They, some of them fascinate me and stuff, but a lot of them also get on my nerves. I don't know how an animal can get on your nerves. They just. They just do. Okay, then here you go. Right. Um, there's a frog, Carl. Just a little frog, a poison arrow frog that contains enough poison to kill over a thousand human beings. Why is it that annoyed? It's not annoyed. Well, why is it going about killing a thousand people? No, it has the potential to. It has enough poison, it has enough toxin in it that could kill a thousand human beings. But does it, it, does it need that? Whereabouts is this? Where's it living? Rainforest, I think. And does it need that sort of power? Is it in that much... Is it, is, is it getting threatened a lot, is what I mean? Well, no, because it's saying, don't come near me, and it shows it with its colours. It's got the colours that say... It doesn't want to be eaten. It doesn't want people to chew a bit, right, and go, oh, I'm an idiot. It's saying, look at my colours, don't eat me. Don't You don't want to come near me. But then why give it bright colours? Because now it's standing out. Yeah, and it's going, don't eat me. Yeah, but make it a colour that fits in, like camouflage. Why Why make it orange? Of course it's going to stand out, and then they'll attack it, and then it'll turn around and bite and kill a thousand men or whatever. No, it doesn't bite. It's the fact that if you were to eat it, you would die. Yeah, but who's... I mean, who's going to eat it? Well, things that eat frogs. The French. <laughs> <laughs> and they yeah. go, Sacre bleu! You have killed me... And 999 <laughs> of my friends. But why Why is everything, like, surviving like this, though? I thought it was all about survival of the fittest, not yeah. the one who looks the hardest. Well, but survival of the fittest is whether you're chosen or not by nature. No, but I I'd survive if I could go about killing a thousand men at one bite. It's not fair. It doesn't bite. It's well, whatever, if it licks you or whatever. But no, it it, not if it licks you, if you lick it. Well, I'm not going to lick it. It's not, it's not going to happen. <laughs> I, don't, I will not be licking a frog, so it's, it's of no danger to me. So I could still kill it, and there's no chance, at no point am I going to lick a, a little frog's head. Not when it's alive or when it's dead. <laughs> I love the fact it's all about you. It's all about how it relates to you. And he's annoyed that they're, like, they're getting away with something. He doesn't, he doesn't like any sly animals. He doesn't like animals hiding. He, don't, he, doesn't, he, wants, no, he doesn't want animals um, killing things. Then he wants them to kill things. He doesn't know what he wants. When they say survival of the fittest, they don't mean that, say, lions have been working out in a gym. It means, the fittest, it means the fittest gene pool. And the fittest gene pool is a gene pool that's still around. That's all it is. You think that everything, slugs... Cats are all somehow in their their ambition is to be like us or to to have the but, attributes but, like us that they can speak, they can talk, they can think, only, they can act. I only think that because when you see people with these pets, lizards, cats, whatever, they treat them like the humans. So I think if you do that enough times, they're going to start getting familiar with Again, certain Planet of the Apes. No, yeah. he's I'm thinking talking, of Planet say like of the Apes. You, say like you with your cat, the way you talk to it, you give it a little cheeky massage and that when it's stressed out. And no, 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 you made that up that it's it was stressed cat. out. It's I'm just playing with my cat, right? If anything, the, the, the cat is to de-stress me. So you're talking to your cat, Rick. Is it answering back much? How are the conversations going with your cat? Well, it's, I have more intelligent conversations <laughs> with my cat than I do with yeah, him. Yeah, here's one, right? Me, we, when my gran died, right, um, she, she had this rubbish dog, right? And that's all we got left. Um, it was called Fluffy. And, like, my gran looked after it in a way that it was treated like a human. Do you know what I mean? Had a little coat on when it went out and all that. Um, anyway, so she died. We get left it. My dad's like, oh, bloody hell, right? Uh, before you know it, it was a wreck. Because we, we weren't sort of bathing it the way she bathed it. We let it out. We wanted to go out. It got covered in oil. It used to go under the car and everything. So it's, it went from looking like this fluffy, you know, poodle to just being a bit of a wreck. It got hit by a car, it ran sideways, like a crab, and all that. <laughs> In the now, course of how long? A month? Probably about two, two months or something. Yeah. Now, so it went from being over-treated to just being treated like a dog. Yeah, but a dog dog isn't, uh, you know, is not an a indigenous species anywhere. We sort of bred those from, you yeah, know, jackals or, or and wolves. Yeah, but change it, all I'm saying is, change it, take away the dog thing. 
I mean, that lizard thing you've got. Salamander. It's it's still sort of treated as part of the family, even though well, it's not. not. As, I mean, how is it treated as part of the family? Just the way, you know, it's looked after that big area that it's got to itself. We, we stick it in a case and feed it a cricket now uh, and again. It, how is that like one of the family? It doesn't matter because it's in your flat. It is in Carl's family. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's in your flat, in it, and it's sat in that corner. I just mean, as time goes on, yeah. things, things get educated as they get older. How old's that lizard? You don't. How old is it? About 15 years old. Right. Now, it knows more now than it did when you got it, because it's been in those surroundings. It's had its eye on things. It's no. 15, so presumably it listens to a lot of Linkin Park. <laughs> it goes on the internet a lot. <laughs> no, but do, do, do you know what I mean? You've already proved your point. It's like that fella who kept hitting the dog on the head with a stick. Right. I've Pavlov, at no point did he hit a dog on the head with a stick. But he kept doing it, and eventually the dog went, I'm sick of this. And what <laughs> <the> dog, <laughs> it? Yeah. There. Brilliant. Do you know what I'd like to do? A programme where you rewrite, you paraphrase someone's theory. So Pavlov's first. We could do uh, um, Freud. Give us, you know, what do you know about Sigmund Freud? The father of psychoanalysis. Right, come on in. I don't know anything on him. Here's an interesting fact. If the, the frog annoyed you, this might annoy you. A blind chameleon will still change colour to match its surroundings. You're aware that the chameleon can... Yeah, whatever it, whatever it sits on. Yeah. But then what, what happens when you put one of them on a mirror? <laughs> no, do, does it get stressed out or what? What's, what's it copying? <laughs> well, it probably doesn't need to copy anything because it looks at itself and it goes, oh, look, looks like that. It's brilliant. God, that was fast. That's the fastest I've ever done that. That is brilliant. So they, they can go any colour, there's nothing, you can put them on anything and they'll go to the thing. I, w I, I don't want you to have a chameleon because you'd just be trying to see what it could and couldn't Try and do. Try catch it out. I know, yeah. Pop it on some tartan. But yeah. again, say like, say like the frog thing, right? Pop it on the telly. Yeah. <laughs> couldn't do it fast enough. <laughs> Why does the chameleon need that skill of copying a colour? Because at the end of the day, that's, that's mainly sticking in, in the woods, isn't it? By trees, by grass. Right. Why can't it just stay green? That's all it needs. That, that those colour changes are only for camouflage, aren't they? I don't know. Some of them are for attraction. Some of them to show moods, anger. No, but I, I just think we're encouraging them. You see, maybe this is evolution or whatever. But at the end of the day, because they can change colour, they're wandering out of their area. They can be wandering about, you know, through a car park and everything, just because they'll go, well, I don't want to get seen. Change to the colour of co concrete. Yeah. Whereas, or into the colour of a Fiat Punto. But they should just stay green. Stay green, right? Stay in the woods and stay safe. <laughs> I love this public information <laughs> for chameleons. Words of advice for chameleons. <laughs> oh, God. Stay green, stay in the woods, <laughs> oh. stay safe. Good night. Oh, God. Um, right. <laughs> uh, the only time a turkey whistles is when it panics. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas time, then. Yeah. What do you think of that, Carl? It goes from one extreme to another, doesn't it? You've got a frog who's going mental. It's not going mental. Killing thousands of people. No, that's not. That's got that sort of power. Then you've got a turkey who's whistling for help. <laughs> <laughs> you think that you should redress the balance a little bit? You want to give... What would you do? Give the frog the ability to kill 500 and the turkey 500? Um, I don't think you should be killing... Uh, I reckon 10. 10, because... You've made your point with 10, haven't you? Do you well, think that he's got 1,000 in his lifetime, like he's got 1,000 to kill? I don't think you understand. I just think he doesn't really kill a thousand people. It doesn't mean someone goes, Frog, you have the power to kill one thousand people in your lifetime. Choose them wisely. But I just think if it needs that sort of power, power. it should be fighting evil. Well, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's knocking about the wrong area, isn't it? If it's under that much danger, move. <laughs> <laughs>